Now, to help us assess the length of those jobless queues and what it all means for Europe's biggest economies, I'm joined now by Linda Yu, economist from Oxford University. Linda, welcome this morning. If I can just first start look at uh, what's happening in the UK generally, if you compare it to Ireland or to Spain, Actually, the UK has been relatively cosseted from the worst of the unemployment. I appreciate that doesn't help very much if you're out of work right now, but generally, actually, it hasn't been as bad as it could be in the teeth of a recession. No, it hasn't. And the main reason is because the UK economy, labour market particularly, is much more flexible than most of uh, Europe. And so that means that workers have taken pay cuts and hour cuts mm. instead of losing their jobs. And so what you find is that unemployment in this recession hasn't hit 3 million, which is the rate which was hit in the 80s and 90s recessions, even though this recession, from peak to trough, output fell by over 6%. And yet, unemployment is only around 2.47 million. Mm -hmm. And so that's the slightly surprising thing, I think, about the unemployment picture in the UK. And I suppose we should take a little bit of consolation, but with a big warning sign, in that this is public sector workers are yet to face job losses. Indeed. Now, we just saw those figures uh, that have just broken. They are disappointing, particularly for August, aren't they? They are, but I don't think we should expect unemployment to fall. <laughs> um, the fact that they've actually plateaued is actually a reasonable expectation mm -hmm. at this stage of the recovery, because the UK economy came out of recession much later, actually, than other European countries. We might have a flexible labour market, but we have an absolutely huge financial sector, and mm -hmm. this was a financial crisis. So the expectation is that unemployment normally should should rise for at least several months after the end of recession. So the fact that it's actually plateauing should actually be read as fairly good news, even if the claimant count is just up slightly. Now, of course, the elephant in the room, if you like, are all of these uh, austerity cuts that haven't been implemented yet that are set to target uh, the public sector. Um, we've got a TUC conference taking place at the moment in Manchester. Very, very strong words being said and figures being talked about of 600,000, 700,000 jobs being lost there. If that isn't mopped up by the private sector, then that would push us over the three million mark, right? Oh, easily. And they're not going to be. Um, the, <laughs> yeah, I know. The expect it does seem rather miraculous, doesn't <laughs> no, it? No, it does. The only uh, the projections that these numbers are being taken mm -hmm. from is done by the Office for Budget Responsibility. Mm -hmm. And what they're expecting is something like two and a half million jobs to be created over the next five years, giving a net employment gain by the end of this parliament, more than absorbing the uh, one in eight job losses expected in the public sector but if you look at job creation even in the boom time there has never been a period where the UK economy has created 500,000 jobs per year and it's not likely to do so now not with austerity coming in and not with the credit crunch still in the economy so I think the unemployment picture is bound to get worse we'll know how much worse by the end of the comprehensive spending review which comes in um, in October so that'll tell us what the job losses will be for the Parliament okay Linda thank you very much for that Thank you.